Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, some people I respect a great deal um, in the world of sports. Charlie Casserly, former NFL exec who's now on NFL Network. Colin Cowherd, the ESPN host. Colin is one of the better gamblers I've come across. Right, Greg Cosell, a guy who breaks down NFL film. They are all skeptical about Johnny Manziel. I think they're all missing the boat here. Right, I think Manziel is a major talent. Here online, before the Browns made their decision to go with Brian Hoyer at the start of the year, I made a video where I talked about how Manziel, in my opinion, is much more talented than Brian Hoyer. Can we at least agree that Manziel runs better than Brian Hoyer, right? Moves around the pocket better than, than Brian Hoyer, right? And I said that, you know, by the fifth game, I expected Manziel to be the starter of the Cleveland Browns, right, once this political tide subsides. Now, there's been a tsunami back here online. I've gotten a lot of comments saying, hey, Dwyer, the Browns picked Hoyer, you know, Manziel's a bum, etc. And, of course, Colin Cowherd on his show. And as I've said, I have a lot of respect for Colin Cowherd. But on his show, he's claiming that, you know, young people just don't, get it. Manziel doesn't have the mental makeup of a Russell Wilson, and he's not that talented. He's not a much better athlete than the people he's playing with at the NFL level. Right? Um, Charlie Casserly points out that the ball comes out from Manziel slower than it does from Brian Hoyer. And, of course, Cassidy also makes the claim that Manziel isn't what he calls an anticipation thrower, right? The idea is you've got to throw the ball in the NFL before the receiver makes the break, right? You can't wait for the receiver to get open because the DBs and safeties are just too good in the NFL. So Manziel coming out of Kevin Sumlin's spread offense at Texas A&M that, you know, an offense that features very short drops, right, looking at one half of the field as opposed to the entire field, throwing at open receivers, right, uh, running out of formations that don't even have anyone in the backfield, that that's not analogous to a pro system. Well, let me just say this. First, the Brown decision to start Hoyer over Manziel. Let's see it for what it is. Just take a look at the Browns' regular season schedule. Right? Understand the Browns open on the road against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Then they play a team, in my opinion, that should be considered one of the front runners for winning the NFC. And that's the New Orleans Saints. Then they play the Baltimore Ravens. Week four, they have a bye. Now, my point to you is you know the way these teams operate. Brian Hoyer was 3-0 and last year. There were a lot of veterans in that locker room that feel an allegiance to Brian Hoyer. Right? These teams don't want any first-year player no matter how talented, to be handed the job in a way in which the locker room is going to feel he hasn't earned it, right? So my point to you is simply, with three tough games at the start of the year, right, I'm not surprised that the Browns would go with Brian Hoyer, right? If Hoyer ends up 0-3 or 1-2, 
and both of those are distinct possibilities, then don't be surprised if the team doesn't make the move during the bye week, which is week four. It's an early bye for Cleveland. Out of the bye, Cleveland then plays the Tennessee Titans, right? Not a powerhouse team, a team with a new coach, a team with Jake Locker at quarterback. Then they play the Steelers, but it would be the second time they play the Steelers, right? They would have figured out some of the wrinkles in the 2014 version of the Steeler defense, right? The Dick LeBeau defense. Then, of course, they would play some weaker teams. They would play the Jacksonville Jaguars, who themselves have a first-year quarterback, right? Then they would play the Raiders, who, by week eight, might themselves have a first-year quarterback. So don't assume that the decision to start Brian Hoyer necessarily means that Brian Hoyer is going to be the starter for the entire season. Right? Don't make that assumption. Let me say this, too. Let's talk about Manziel and this idea of arm strength. You know, former NFL exec of the year, Bill Polian, actually had the chance, because a family member was attending Texas A&M, to watch Johnny Manziel when he was in college in practice. Now keep in mind, Bill Polian has been around superstar quarterbacks like Peyton Manning, right? Polian used to be involved with the Indianapolis Colts, right? Polian is in the player assessment business, right? He's the one who would make the call on who to draft and who not to draft. You know, Bill Polian, who's seen a lot of quarterbacks, understands that Johnny Manziel has an above average arm. I'm a big Teddy Bridgewater fan, huge. I think Bridgewater sees the field better than most. But Teddy Bridgewater doesn't have Johnny Manziel's arm. Let's not forget the talent equation when we're talking about quarterbacks. I would argue that Manziel not only has the better legs than Brian Hoyer, is not only the better athlete than Brian Hoyer, right? But Manziel has the better arm than Brian Hoyer. Now understand, Hoyer's been in the league for a number of years. He was Tom Brady's backup for multiple years. Should anyone be surprised that Brian Hoyer in his late 20s might be able to read defenses better than Johnny Manziel, who's a rookie who hasn't yet made it out of preseason? I feel the Charlie Casserly critique of Manziel is a little bit unfair. Give the guy an opportunity to get his feet wet. Right? Keep in mind, Casserly himself admits that Manziel did a lot better in his second game than he did his first game. Folks, as I make this video, Manziel's only played two preseason games. The point is, he's the better athlete with the stronger arm, and he's younger. He has more upside than Brian Hoyer. Is there anyone watching this video who thinks that the Cleveland Browns are going to make the Super Bowl this year? If they're not in playoff contention, shouldn't they be thinking about their future? Who's the future brighter with? Brian Hoyer or Johnny Manziel? Right? Let's also talk about this notion Cowherd has, that young people really haven't been around long enough to know the lay of the land. Right, that you know, young people don't care about Johnny Manziel flipping the bird to the Washington Redskins bench, but that older players are appalled, and that this shows the kind of immaturity that shouldn't be under center. Let me just say, you know, people need to get rid of this notion of the good old days in football, they really do. Understand, today, young quarterbacks are doing a lot better than they used to. I can tell you in the 1980s we were astonished by Dan Marino's rookie season.
Compare and contrast that rookie season with the rookie seasons of Andrew Luck, RG3, and I'm not even an RG3 fan. I don't think he's that good. And Russell Wilson. Understand now you have young guys coming out of college who are much more prepared for the pros. Much more prepared for the pros than they used to be back in the day. I mean, take a look at Heisman Trophy winner Carson Palmer's career start. He was holding a clipboard, folks. Who are the great quarterbacks today? Peyton Manning? Take a look at his rookie numbers. Awful. Look at the number of picks. Awful. Look at Troy Aikman, who's in the Hall of Fame, who won three rings. Look at his rookie season. Awful. So when I hear old-timers, OGs, like Colin Cowherd saying, hey, you know, these young kids, what do they know about quarterbacking? Let me just say, they know more than my generation. Look at Steve McNair's rookie year. He's carrying a clipboard. Right, Johnny Manziel has been out there now for two preseason games. Right, give him a chance. This newer generation, they learn faster than the older generation. They look at more films. They have access to more resources, digital media, the entire idea of the internet, right? The uh, digitalization of football plays, of playbooks, right? Let me just say, too, I know that uh, Cowherd was critical of any comparison of Johnny Manziel to old-timers who were known to be partiers, people like Joe Namath, right? Cowherd has pointed out that you know, Joe Namath had two wide receivers. Today, in the NFL, you often have four wide receivers. You mean like the four wide receivers they had at Texas A&M when Johnny Football was taking down Alabama? I mean, understand, now in college, these quarterbacks have multiple receiver sets. I don't buy for a minute the idea either that because Johnny Football likes to travel to places like Las Vegas during his free time to hang out with other multimillionaires, that he somehow doesn't take his profession seriously. I'll tell you what, you won't find a more marketing savvy group than young people today, right? Who knows how to advertise using social media? I would argue that it's the young people, right? Johnny Manziel understands that he's known because he plays football. I don't have a problem with him networking, not in the slightest. It doesn't mean to me that he's going to neglect honing his football skills, right? Charlie Castley has already pointed out that he's improved greatly from week one to week two. This preseason, if he's improving, why all the criticism? Right, let me point out too. Cowherd is pointing out that Manziel ran a 4 6 something at the combine. In other words, okay, he's not as fast as Michael Vick. Let me ask another question. How many quarterbacks in this league can run a sub 4 7? Very few. Aren't we criticizing Manziel for actually having better wheels than most? I mean, the criticism really here is out of order. What did this guy do other than win the Heisman, have a pretty good second year, and then go pro? Why are we erecting all these obstacles to any kind of recognition of the guy as a real NFL quarterback? Don't we have a different standard when we're talking about him versus other young guys who are in their rookie year, right? So all I can say is this to the Brian Hoyer crowd, and I've heard from you, right? Look, I think Hoyer has a lot of talent. 
I know Hoyer was 3-0 and last year. I think he's a gamer. I understand that he had a lot of drops this preseason. Some of them were the receiver's fault. Some of them were his fault. Right? I understand that. I understand he gets rid of the ball faster than Johnny Manziel does. But let me just ask you. If Manziel figures out this pro game that Hoyer has been in for years, if Manziel gets the ball out as fast as Hoyer, doesn't he have a higher ceiling than Brian Hoyer? In a year in which Cleveland is not going to win the Super Bowl, don't you want to go after that higher ceiling? Let me just say, I expect Manziel to be the starter by October 5th, week 5 of this NFL season against the Tennessee Titans. The fact that the team didn't coronate him after two preseason games isn't that surprising to me. Take a look at my earlier video where I mentioned Manziel and Hoyer. You're going to see that in that video I talked about week 5. Right? Let's not get carried away. Johnny Football right now is an above average runner at the quarterback position. Johnny Football right now is more accurate than Tim Tebow ever was. Johnny Football right now has a stronger throwing arm than some of the starting quarterbacks in the National Football League. Right? At the end of the day, this guy is a talent who is in his first year. He hasn't even played his first regular season game. Aren't the cowherds of the world, aren't the Charlie Cassilies of the world, getting just a little bit carried away at this point? Give the kid a chance Let's stop judging the kid from the parties he hits in Las Vegas or the dollar bills that he rolls up. Why don't we start judging the kid on what the kid does on the field? Right? Statistically, Brian Hoyer is not having that much better a preseason than Johnny Football. He's not. Right? So let's give Johnny an opportunity. Right? Let's see what he does against the Rams and Beers to close out this preseason, and then let's see if he gets a chance to play during the regular season. Right? I can just say I'm expecting a lot of teams, including the Dallas Cowboys, to regret passing on this guy. I think he can play. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.